Every year, the video game industry looks forward to E3 because it's the first time in the year that we get to see not only all of the new game announcements, but also further gameplay and information of the games that we already know about. Microsoft, Sony, Ubisoft, Nintendo, EA, Bethesda all have their conferences around this time of the year. And although some companies have decided to separate themselves from E3, there's always a load of buzz and new announcements around this time. With that in mind, I wanted to go through what games I'm most looking forward to seeing at E3 and next week. Now these are just my personal choices and there are of course hundreds of games to choose from so I'm sure there'll be some games that you're excited for that I don't mention. There is of course also usually plenty of new games announced at E3 that we don't even know about but let's take a look at the ones that have already been announced. We're going to start with the game that I'm looking forward to the most at this year's E3, The Last of Us Part 2. We know it's going to be shown at E3, the devs have been hyping it up and the original Last of Us was such an incredible game with a moving story. The word masterpiece gets thrown around quite a lot but honestly it was really just that good. It's definitely in my top 5 games of all time. Naughty Dog make incredible games but who knows when this one will actually release. It could perhaps make it to the back end of this year or early 2019. No release date is confirmed just yet and it was originally shown off way back in 2016 but back then it was stressed that the game was still very early on in development. We had a trailer last year as well that was brutal and really set the tone for the new game but we don't really know too much about the story or what to expect. But what we do know about the game is that it's going to be set in the city of Seattle a number of years after the events of the previous game. From the original teaser we know that Ellie is really angry about something saying that she's going to kill every last one of them whoever that may be. It seems that Ellie this time around will be the primary playable character in the new game with Joel taking more of a back seat perhaps. Either way I'm confident to say that I don't really need to have played the game to know that Naughty Dog are going to put together another incredible experience. I'm on board with this one. Next up Red Dead Redemption 2. Can Rockstar do any wrong? We'll see. I loved the last Red Dead game. I think we all did. Rockstar games just ooze a real quality to them and a lot of other games struggle to replicate that. When Rockstar announces games, the internet stands up and everyone listens. We've already had a few trailers for Red Dead now, but there's a good chance we'll get to see some single player gameplay, perhaps a few full missions at E3 this year. We can only hope, apparently it's got a massive multiplayer mode too and there's been rumours of course of a battle royale mode. And Red Dead Redemption 2 is due for release in October of this year. It actually releases only a week or so after Battlefield 5, a very busy month and while we're on the subject of BF5, Let's quickly talk about it. Now obviously I'm a Battlefield channel, I'm extremely excited for the next main game in the franchise and from everything that we've seen and heard regarding gameplay changes and improvements, I really hope that this could be one of the best team play focused Battlefield games in recent memory. At EA Play we're going to get plenty of gameplay by the looks of it, that's usually the case and hopefully we'll get to see all of those new features that they talked about in the behind the scenes reveal. As well as BF5, EA's other big AAA announcement that we already know about is Anthem. We saw a glimpse of it at EA Play last year but I expect we'll see a lot more of what the game has got to offer this time around. Now it's a bit harder to get excited for Anthem this year because it's been pushed back into 2019 so we've got a bit more of a wait to get our hands on a full release but it could be a really popular game if done correctly and by all accounts the game was delayed to give it more time for development rather than rushing out an unfinished product and I'd prefer that a game is delayed and actually full of content and works than having something rushed out the door. And here's what we know so far, it's being made by Bioware and it's the Bioware team that worked on the original Mass Effect trilogy and it will function largely as a story based RPG similar to Destiny or The Division. That being said Bioware have stated it will definitely feel distinctively Bioware so until we see extended gameplay it will be hard to get a feel for the game. Hopefully at EA Play we should definitely see some real gameplay and in more detail. I can't wait to get my hands on Anthem. Now moving on to something completely different. Spider-Man. This is a PlayStation exclusive being made by Insomniac Games and boy does this look good. Insomniac are known for games like Ratchet and Clank as well as Sunset Overdrive. Sony are absolutely smashing the exclusive games recently. God of War has not long released and was an incredible game. And Spider-Man I think looks like it's shaping up to be another great title, releasing in September this year, not long to go. There are two things that stand out the most from the gameplay that we've already seen. 
The movement system in the game is extremely well polished, or at least it seems to be. Flying around between buildings seems incredibly smooth and well done. Also, the combat system reminds me a lot of the Batman games. Smooth animations between attacks and enemies with some tricks and gadgets up your sleeve. It's certainly a joy to watch. I'm really looking forward to seeing what else they show off at E3. So what about The Division 2 then? Well, I played a lot of the first Division game. There was so much hype for it. I got through the story and then there just wasn't much to do after that. Apparently the game has had a lot of updates since, but none of them to catch my attention. However, one thing that The Division really had going for it was the beautiful environment and the engine. I know that the game looked slightly different from the early gameplay, but the city of New York has never looked better in a video game ever before. The level of detail was incredible, and it also ran pretty well too on PC. Massive and Ubisoft have proved that the Snowdrop engine is definitely capable. So we already know that The Division 2 is in the works, and if you believe the rumours, there's even the possibility of a Battle Royale mode. I know, more Battle Royale please, but imagine how cool BR could be in a built-up city like New York on the Snowdrop engine. We don't know a whole lot more about the game just yet, it may not even launch this year, and from what Massive are saying, it's possible that the next game may branch out away from New York and focus in a different city. I think that would be cool. One thing is certain, The Division, by all accounts, has improved significantly since launch, and the devs have done their best to tweak and change the game with community feedback going forward. So, as long as the second game builds upon that and adds a ton of features, it could be very good. I'm going to throw COD Black Ops 4 in here as well, but not the core game. The standard multiplayer really didn't interest me at all from the reveal. And this one might be a bit controversial, but I'm really interested to see what Treyarch do with the Battle Royale mode, and fingers crossed they might show it off, or at least a glimpse of it at E3. I'm honestly not that interested in the core multiplayer experience, like I said, it just looks very similar to Black Ops and typical Call of Duty to me, which I'm kind of bored of. But I'll be very interested to see how they incorporate the BR mode. Now there are a few other games that are worth a mention, but they're games that we still don't know too much about. Death Stranding for example, the game by Hideo Kojima, I'm still very confused about this game, just like everyone else I imagine. What type of game is it? Perhaps at this E3 we're going to see gameplay that will maybe explain what on earth it's all about? You never know with Kojima, or worst case scenario they show us gameplay and it's just as confusing as it was before. Fingers crossed that doesn't happen. I'm a massive fan of the Metal Gear Solid series though, so I'm really looking forward to see what Kojima does next. Now another Ubisoft title, recently the new Assassin's Creed game got leaked. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was revealed by a keychain, and Ubisoft just came out and released a teaser. Was it because of the keychain, or was it planned all along? Who knows? We do live in a crazy world. Anyways, Assassin's Creed is a very popular franchise, and I think Origins did a great job to get a lot of players back on the franchise after some relatively poor games in years gone by. Origins did fantastic stuff like implementing side quests that were never the same, a new combat system, and interesting things you could do with animals. So Odyssey from the teaser, it looks like it's set in Greek history and possibly might release later this year. I just hope that it isn't rushed. And from Bethesda, Fallout 76 just got announced, and well, Fallout is another incredibly popular franchise, people go crazy for it, but it sounds like Fallout 76 is going to be vastly different from the previous entries in the franchise, so E3 could shed some light on that for a lot of people. I read some articles online that said it's kind of like a multiplayer survival game in the same vein as DayZ or Rust. Interesting. I kind of feel like survival games have had their day though, but maybe with Fallout in the mix it could rejuvenate it. And another game that I'm really looking forward to seeing is Cyberpunk 2077. That's definitely going to be shown. And this is a new action RPG by the creators of The Witcher 3. The Twitter account for the game recently showed some activity after years of staying silent, so perhaps we'll get our first look. Lastly, I say this every single year, you know what I'm going to do, Half-Life 3. Look, I think we've waited long enough now, Valve. I think it's time. But recently, Valve have come out and said that they are working on new games, so maybe... I just pray and hope that Gabe is going to rock up to E3, he's going to be on the stage with Jeff Keighley and he's just going to hand out little Half-Life 3 chocolates in the shape of Gordon Freeman and crowbars. Half-Life 3, confirmed. I know it's optimistic and I know it won't happen, but come on, we can't let the hope die. It's all we have. I'm sure we'll see Gordon Freeman again someday. One game that we might see, fingers crossed, is a new Splinter Cell. There's been rumours about it. I'd love to see Sam Fisher return to the gaming industry. 
And also there's rumours of like four new Gears of War games for the Xbox and I think that Microsoft really need to get some good exclusives out to help push back against the might of Sony because the Sony exclusives are just absolutely killing it at the moment and Sony are selling way more Playstations than Xboxes. I'd love for Microsoft to come out with some epic new Halo game for example and see a return to the former glory of the franchise. Needs more Master Chief for sure. And there we have it, that's my hot take on E3 this year before the show. Also of course EA Play and Bethesda and everyone else having their little conventions. As I mentioned before there will of course be plenty of games that I didn't talk about and we didn't know about but those ones that I mentioned are the ones that I'm the most hyped for. So let me know down in the comments below what you're most excited to see at E3 this year. If you enjoyed the video give me a like, if you didn't a dislike, subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.